All right, Shalom to the hopeful elect, Barakim La, Allah Yahweh, Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh, all praises, infinite honor and glory be to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh, who is the God of heaven and earth and of the 12 tribes of Israel, which consists of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Double honor is always to Yah, to the elder apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, love, blessings, and salutations be to the hopeful elect, Habayath, Bandavada, the house of David, the brothers laboring, day to day out, giving all diligence to make their calling of election sure. Help us seal the elect of the nation of Israel for the return of our Lord Hamashiach Yahweh is at hand, and to the Akim Wagwath, which are the brothers and sisters that also listen and believe on this glorious gospel that's being preached throughout the four corners of the earth. And to you, I say Shalom. So Shalom to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. This is Brother Sagala back another day, all through the spirit and power of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh by Hashem Rekakadash. I don't want to rock the Zion, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying unto the hopeful elect, the believers, the Bakaryam. So, I'm going to jump right into it. This article, as you can see, is from physics.org. And I um, just want to touch on um, this particular article here. It says, astronomy student discovers 17 new planets, including Earth-sized world. Now, I wanted to touch on this because I wanted to get into the fact that what we see going on, you know, anytime we see articles like this, which this this kind of this kind of stuff comes out regularly, and what's being pushed, or you know, is the wine, the philosophies of of the wicked. It's it's here to totally indoctrinate the people and to keep the people asleep. When you read Isaiah sixty verses uh, one and two. The behold, the earth will be in darkness and gross darkness to people. And, what, and what's one of the main reasons is through the indoctrination, you know, of um, of the education programs that are in Babylon. They're there to, to teach you, you know, their ways and their science and their history, et cetera. Right. Not the truth, ultimately. So the, 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 the public school system um, is set up the prison and school pipeline, all the philosophies. You know, all of these things, and we'll touch on this um, in this lesson. I don't want to write this make mention of a few of these things as we continue on. So it says, astronomy student discovers 17 new planets, including an Earth-sized world. And all this is to keep people thinking and believing in Esau's um, technology and his science, his, his pseudoscience, right? Which is contrary to the Bible, contrary to Yahweh Hashem Yavashah, the God of heaven and earth. So now this is a student that so-called found all these planets. Now it says University of British Columbia astronomy student Michelle Kunimoto has discovered 17 new planets, including a potentially habitable Earth-sized world by combing through data gathered by NASA Kepler mission. Over its original four-year mission, the Kepler satellite looked for planets, especially those that lie in the habitable zones of their stars where liquid water could exist on a rocky planet surface. The new findings published in the Astronomical Journal include one such particularly rare planet, officially named KIC 7340288b. The planet discovered by Kunimoto is just one and a half times the size of Earth, small enough to be considered rocky instead of a gaseous like the giant planets of the solar systems and in the habitable zone of the star. This planet is about a thousand light years away. So we're not going there anytime soon, said Konimoto, a PhD candidate in the Department of Physics and Astronomy. But this is a really exciting find since there have only been 15 small confirmed planets in the habitable zone found in Kepler data so far. The planet has a year that is 142 and a half days long, orbiting its star at 0 0.444 astronomical units. The distance between Earth and our sun, just bigger than Mercury's orbit in our solar system and gets about a third of the light Earth gets from the sun. Of the other 16 new planets discovered, <clears throat> the smallest is only two thirds the size of Earth one of the smallest planets to be found with Kepler so far. 
The rest range in size of up to eight times the size of Earth. Kunimoto is no stranger to discovering planets. She previously discovered four during her undergraduate degree at UBC. Now working on her PhD at UBC, she used what is known as the transit method to look for the planets among the roughly 200,000 stars observed by the Kepler mission. Now, I wanted to touch on this because in the spirit, you know, when we see articles like this, it's easy to kind of, you know, look past it. But the thing I wanted to touch on in the spirit is this. First and foremost, this is all the spirit of, of how to wine. Before I even get into the lesson, I want to touch on the fact that they always throw out these numbers, all of these guesstimations and, you know, how many planets is out there and how many, how big the solar system is and the universe, which we know is the second heaven. Now, this is something that the scriptures say, which is, um, it kind of puts everything into perspective, right? It's a few that come to mind. This is the book of Psalm. I'm going to start here. With the spirit of how to want Psalm 147, right? And I'm going to start at verse 4. It says, He, speaking of Yahweh, telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. So the Most High knows all the numbers of the stars. Esau could only guesstimate how many planets are, are out there, etc. I read it again. Psalm 147 and 4. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. So the Most High not only know all the planets and, you know, stars in the universe, everything is named, showing you that the Most High is omnipotent. Now, let's go down to verse 5. It says, great is Adawan Nawa, our, which is our Lord. Great is Adawan Nawa, and of great power, his understanding is infinite, meaning there's no end to it. But, e but Esau, the man of sin, his understanding is not infinite. So let's show that in the scriptures. The, the, the understanding of the, of the wicked is not infinite. So on a lot of these things, he's just what? He's using his pseudoscience, you know, and technology to woo and sway a lot of you um, people in the earth, you know, especially you Israelites, to be in line with thinking that he is the most high or the, or the closest thing to it. Job 14 and 5, seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. So this devil only has, he has limitations, right? He's limited. And one of the main things he's limited in really is his knowledge. Because we just read that the most high's knowledge is infinite. So this knowledge that we have obtained, we realize it's a depth of riches, right? And it's a depth of knowledge touching on, you know, everything that matters in life and giving us all wisdom and understanding that we need and so much more to be had you know, once we get those new bodies and once we're in the kingdom of heaven, right? And that's what we're waiting for, salvation, in order to possess, you know, and tap into, to, you know, the things that, that we're not privy to. The scripture said we know in part and we prophesy in part. So now let's continue to show that further. I'm going to put it in the word science here. It just came to mind. Let's put that word in. When you put it in here in the blue letter, you know, it gives you a few scriptures. Here's the one I want. First Timothy 6 and, and 20. It says, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so-called. So not all science is actual is actually real. Not all science does uh, lines up with the Bible. So when you hear the word science, people typically they tend to believe that that is the study of a thing but that there's truth to it, that it has to be true because Esau, Edom, the so-called white man can go into the heavens and he got telescopes and he got technology, right? Which I call tricknology. It tricked the people into believing that he is the most high, which the scriptures say he sit in the seat of the most high. He sit in the temple of the most high acting as if he is. So science, it says, is falsely so-called. So the white man science, Esau, Edom science is false science, right? His study, the study of things, and his guesstimations and approximations. You know, all these things, his hypothesis or his hypotheses, all of them, you know, uh, are not in line with truth. So these things, like these articles you see here, have been pushed out over the years and constantly are being put out to continue 
you know, to um, push forth predictive programming and keeping um, keeping you Babylonians and people of the world in line, you know, with his, um, you know, with, with his science, with his mind, you know, that's why a lot of people don't think outside of, you know, what what is it, what is taught in uh, a classroom or in a university, right? So now let's continue on and let's jump into the lesson because the scripture said this is science falsely so-called. So what are, what are we to adhere to and what are we to believe in? The truth. That's the real science, the a math. You know, the truth in the Hebrew is math, right? That's the truth. So let's show that. Psalm 64 and 1, speaking of the wicked, it says to the chief musician, a psalm of David. This is the words of Malak Dawada, King David. It says, hear my voice, O power, in my prayer. Preserve my life from the fear of the enemy. And who is the enemy? The wicked, Esau, Edom. Psalm 64 and 2 pertaining to Malachi 1 and 4, you know, and um, pertaining to Genesis 36 and verse 8, Esau, Edom. Esau is Edom and he is the wicked of the earth. Psalm 62, 64 and 2, hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity who wet their tongue like a sword. See the things they put out, their mouths, their tongue, their media. Everything they put out, you know, uh, as far as their, from their prestigious universities and their, their cutting edge technology from, you know, laboratories, so on and so forth. All that really is a part of their tongues because those things push and promote, you know, the philosophies that are adopted by the world. That's why the scriptures say that Babylon, you know, had intoxicated the world. The whole earth was drunken, you know, drunken with what? Drunken with the philosophies of the wicked, right? The whole earth is mad and drunken from the philosophies of the wicked. Verse three again, Psalm 64 and three, who wet their tongue like a sword, right? So they're, they're, their tongue, their media, the things they push out onto the earth, all of that is like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. The perfect is speaking about the children of Israel, more specifically the elect, but the children of Israel nonetheless. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. Verse five, they encourage themselves in an evil matter. So all that they do is encouraging themselves in wickedness. We're going to touch on that as we continue on as well. I don't want to write this out. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privily. They say, who shall see them? So these devils don't believe that for what they're doing, that the most high see, the scriptures say that in Job, that can he see through the thick clouds? Speaking of Yahweh Shem Yom meaning can he truly see what's going on here on the earth if he is in the heavens? And the answer is a resounding, he can, yes. Right? Through the angels, the eyes of the Lord, which are in every place, beholding the good and the evil. Verse six, Psalm 64 and six, they search out iniquities they accomplish a diligent search. So this is all a part of that diligent search. You know, no different than when they have uh, paleontologists go and study things and they're different scientists. This is the same stuff. It's all really wrapped up in one. And we're going to touch on that here in a second. It says they search, they accomplish a diligent search, both the inward thought of every one of them, speaking of the wicked, the, the Edomites, and the heart is deep. They look, they look and, and, and explore things. To the T. That's why they're going all in the heavens and, you know, trying to find a way to get life on another, on another planet and, and go and inhabit another planet. But it's never going to happen because we read in Job, he has bounds that he can't pass. Right. Meaning everything that the wicked does, he has limitations. Right. He's limited. But we read the most high in Psalm 147 is infinite. His knowledge is infinite, which is the knowledge that we're tapping into. Right. So we're, we're going to the point of being limitless. Right. Being tapped into your Habashim Yabashai, ultimately receiving spiritual power and then those new bodies. So now let's continue. Let's continue to show that. Right. Let me go to the book of Revelation real quick. Revelation 13. Here goes another example. Right. Of this, this devil's um, technology, his pseudoscience and how he pushes that. Because this is an actual science magazine here. This article is from a science magazine. 
and is quoting, you know, magazines, right, that are uh, scientific. It's the book of Revelation 13 and verse 13, speaking of the wicked, and he, speaking of Esau, Edom, Job 9 and 24, the earth is being given into the hand of the wicked. Revelation 13 and 13, and he, the wicked, doeth great wonders, so that he make a fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man. And he did that during by using the Manhattan Project, which is, you know, which was used to uh, destroy Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which were those atomic bombs. No one else has done that to this from this time forward, right? So he did this in the sight of men and brought great fear into the earth. Verse 14, Revelation 13 and 14, and deceiveth them, here's the point, and deceiveth them. So all the things that he does, all that he pushes, all of his philosophies, science, his technology, and deceiveth them that dwelleth on the earth by the means of those miracles. Those miracles is another name for technology and science, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live, the revived Roman Empire, right? So they, they live now, which is Rome 2.0, which is America, Babylon the Great. So that image is being made, right? And, 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 and the beast system is being set up, is being set up by the wicked, as we read in context. But let's continue on. Let's continue on showing that because there was something that happened, and I want to touch on this, which is why these Edomites, and this is all in the spirit, why these Edomites are the way that they are. The Most High said, what well, he, he has made crooked cannot be made straight. So let's show that. Jeremiah 31 and 35. Here, and here what we're going to read about, you know, is the Most High Yahweh by Shem Yabashah posing a challenge to the Edomites, right? And this is in the spirit of the Edomite to try to one up and be as the Most High. As the scripture saying once again, that the wicked, they sit in the seat of the Most High, acting as if they are the Most High, right? Jeremiah 31 and 35. Here's a challenge that Yahweh by Yahweh Shai posed to the wicked. Jeremiah 31 and 35. Thus saith Yahweh, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinance of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which the sun and the moon is symbolic of wisdom. And that light is the truth, which divideth the sea when the when the waves thereof roar. It says Yahweh of hosts is his name. Continuing on, verse 36, if those ordinances, these are words of the, of the Most High, if those ordinances, speaking of the sun and the moon, depart from before me, saith Yahweh, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. So this is part of that challenge that's being posed, which is why we see all of these um, different universities and NASA, so on and so forth, and so much money being put towards space exploration. And one of the main reasons is why it's in the, in the spirit of the Edomite to try to one up the most high and try to accomplish, you know, this challenge for those that can receive it in the spirit. It's pretty, pretty clear and plain. Verse 36, if those ordinances depart from me, saith the Lord, Yahweh, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Verse 37, which if this could be accomplished, if they could search out the, 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 the heavens and, you know, and, and outdo or uh, um, actually accomplish this challenge that was put out before the Most High, the Most High said he would do away with his people. Verse 37, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, if heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel, Yahshua Allah, for all that they have done, saith the Lord Yahweh. So the Most High said, if this could be done, you could search out the heavens and, and, and the depths of the oceans. You know, if you had that, that wisdom, which is the sun and the moon, and you were truly like me, like the Most High, I would do away with my people. So that's in the inward parts. It's in the mind, the spirit, which is crooked of the Edomites, right? Scriptures say, behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. Because he, for him to even think that he could be you know, like the Most High or in the likeness of the Most High is foolishness, right? So now, what is his what is his response? What is his response? Let's see what his response has been. The response of the wicked to the Most High's challenge. Obadiah 1 
And I'll go right to the point in verse three. It says, the pride of thine heart, which is the mind, the spirit, right, of the Edomite, the pride of thine heart, have deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rocks, speaking of the Edomites, which to dwell in the clefts of the rocks, you know, means they call themselves Caucasian, which also means cave, cave dweller, you know, a dweller in caves, which are the, 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 the Edomites, which are also known as the scientific Neanderthal, which dwelleth in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? And that's in the mind and the spirit of the Edomites. You know, they're the top dogs. Who's going to bring them down with their technology, with their tanks, their fighter jets, their ICBMs, you know, all the cutting edge technology, all the things that they can do. So they believe that they, they truly, they got a God complex and they've superseded the most high in their hearts. The scriptures also say they believe that their houses are going to continue on forever. Meaning their rule, ultimately, that there no one is going to be able to take them out of rulership. But as we know, the scriptures tell us in Psalm 75, the most high taketh down one and putteth up another. Obadiah 1 and 4, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and that's the symbol of the Edomites. So they've been highly exalted as the eagle in mind and spirit, meaning they're proud. And though thou set thy nest among the stars, though, though they go into doing all the space ex explorations, you know, they, that they've done over the years. And it's all the Edomites. Sputnik, the Russians was doing that first. And then NASA and their Apollo programs and then the other nations have followed. Though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith Yahweh. The most I said, no matter what they do, he's going to bring the Edomite down. Now, why is that important? Right, because this is the response of the wicked. Let's show it. It's the book of Micah 2. In verse 1, because this is the mind of the Edomite. This has been his response to the challenge that the Most High Yahweh Bashem Yabashai has posed. Micah 2 and 1. It says, Woe to them that devise iniquity, speaking of the, the, the wicked, right? Who Job, in Job 9 and 24, is ruling the earth, right? In wickedness and tyranny. Woe to them that, that, woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds, meaning in their in their meditation, in their heart, they're already they're always meditating what wickedness, evil, mischief. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. And this is through their think tanks, right, and all of their 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 top minds, scientists, you know, astronomers, astrology, you know, the people that's into astro uh, um, astronomy, right, and all of their their their, their scientists and all of their wizards. The scriptures speak about. So all of these people are pushing forth what? Once again, through their think tanks, the ideologies of the wicked to the earth. Verse two, Micah two and two, and they covet fields and take them by violence, which they've, this has been the end of the Edomite all over the world. You go into Australia, they did that and ran a, uh, the majority of the Aboriginal or Aborigine people up into the mountains of, of, of Australia. The same thing in South Africa. Right. The same thing throughout Europe. The same thing in many parts of Africa, where you have a lot of Africans speaking French and other languages, you know, along the northern part of it and, and the, the west coast of Africa and in the interiors. And while you have a lot of Edomite nations, you know, who still have strongholds in these places. And they covet fields and take them by violence. So these fields that they've covered has been all over the world. America being being the main one, the Americas, North, South and Central America, how they rape, rob and murder the earth from his, for his resources and and, and for uh, and with his military prowess is how they've conquered the earth by the sword. They've ruled going back to the time of Alexander, right? Alexander, the Macedonian, Micah two and two, and they covered fields and take them by violence. And it shows you. What they do, they come in and violently take take over lands, which lines up with Numbers 35 and 33 when you read it, you know, which tells you what? Woe well, to them, you know, that, um, that, let me just get it. I don't want to quote it, you know. This is Numbers. So when it says they covet fields and take them by violence, what is that talking about? Numbers, the 35th chapter it goes into that. One of many precepts. Numbers 35, and I'll go right to the point. 
here at uh, verse 33, Numbers 35 and verse 33. And it reads, so, <clears throat> so shall ye not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood is defiled the land. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. So how much more for the Edomites, you know, who, who came and killed hundreds of millions of Israelites here in the Americas? Micah 2 and 2, and they covet fields and take them by violence. That's all the blood that's been shed in, in the Americas, right? The merciless, the mercilessly killing of the tribes, the 12 tribes, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even the man and his heritage. So they oppress, you know, the righteous, you know, with their philosophies. So these articles really push something much more because it goes into the fabric and into the mind, you know, of what America is and how the people in this country and around the world respond to Esau's rule. So let's continue to show that. I got a few more. I'm going to close it out. So this is... Um, the book of Revelation, the 16th chapter, because this touches on the fact of how are they able to accomplish these things? Let's show that Revelation 16 and verse 13, and it reads, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. See, this is all making reference to Esau, Edom. Those three unclean spirits, you know, going into you know, how they have um, gained power on the earth is through those un unclean spirits that come forth from the Edomites. Now, it goes into the military, the economic, and religious. The military being the military-industrial complex. And when you look up the war colleges in Pennsylvania, you know, they have war schools, and what they do in these schools is that they, they set up, they train for war, they train up the generals, so on and so forth, but they also also plot and plan, you know, the wars to come. Right? When you when you when you go and research that. So the military industrial complex, the war colleges would be one. That's the military, one of the clean unclean spirits. The economic is the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, commerce and capitalism, the system of, of money that Esau rules with and on the earth. He controls the basically the flow of money and goods. That's part of the power that he has when you read the scriptures about the beast system, the beast, the whore rides the beast. She's on the back of the beast. She's controlling everything. So the IMF is in London. But all that's controlled through what? Through, once again, commerce and capitalism, the International Mon Monetary Fund. And that third unclean spirit is the religious, starting with the Vatican. So when you have the Pope, right, the Pope is really just an image, a symbol of the rule of you know, the, the, the religion that rules on the earth, which is, that controls everything. And that, that starts with um, the Vatican and Catholicism, which is, you know, how we have the small hats able to do the things that they're doing. Because they all really work in concert and down to Christianity, which is, you know, a strong arm of that third unclean spirit, the religious so the Vatican, the small hats, the 1948ers, they all work together to put them in the land and have them controlling everything so that things like this can be pushed to the world. More of the philosophies, the wine of Babylon. That's all the articles like this really is, you know, and their technology and, you know, their space exploration and all, all of the things that they do. So those are the unclean spirits. Revelation 16 and 13. Now, how does that line up? Those unclean spirits, and I just wanted to touch on this before I close this out, they they, they push forth the, the philosophy. So through the military, the economic, and the religious power that they have, they have a mass on the earth, they're able to push forth the philosophies or the wine of Babylon, right? The ideologies, the science, the technology, which, which goes into, once again, how the society is run, what the social norms are, the morals, the ethics, the societal norms, that is what's acceptable in the conduct of a people, right? Which all goes together with the, with the wine. So with that, I hope that was uh, edifying to the hopeful elect of Yahweh Hashem Yabashai. I want to give all praises, infinite honor and glory unto Yahweh by Hashem Yabashai, Barakatai Yahweh by Hashem Yabashai, Kohalo Yahweh by Hashem Yabashai, all praises, 
Infinite honor and glory be to Yahweh Bashimi of Shai, the God of heaven and earth. Double honor to the elder apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, love, blessings, and salutations be to the hopeful elect, Habayath, Madabada, the house of David, the brothers laboring day in and day out, giving all diligence to make the calling of election sure, help to seal the elect of the nation of Israel for the return of our Lord Hamashiach Yahweh Shai is at hand, and to the Akim Wakwaf, which are the brothers and sisters that also listen and believe on the glorious gospel being preached throughout the four corners of the earth. And to you, I say Shalom, Shalom to the hopeful elect.